Hey, what's going on, everybody, and welcome to another episode of BTV, the podcast where I interview content creators and all kinds of creators, whether it be art, streaming, or music, or anything content creation related. Today, we have one of the people that I've been looking forward to having on uh, since I met him over here on Glimish, and it is MG Live. So I'm going to give the floor to him, and he's going to introduce himself and tell you guys a little bit about him. Oh yes, oh yes, there we are, MG Lav. So like I said, you know, streamer, or well, not streamer, content creator for 10 years. Yeah, 10 years, that's a lot. Um, Mike, that's a century actually, I just realized. Wow. Well, a that decade literally... actually. Oh, a decade, yeah. Jeez. Century would be 100. <laughs> oh my, imagine that. Literally, if I did content creation for 100 years, trust me, I would, I'd be spawned and I'd be like a skeleton because sometimes it can literally you know work yourself down sometimes but like i said you know i've been streaming for 10 years i've been all over the place youtube twitch glemish mixer vila facebook i've seen it all everywhere everywhere yeah everywhere so speaking of that what got you interested in content creation because everybody starts off differently everybody for me personally yeah. Just a little bit of background on me. I got into it when I was 10 years old. I had a shower bench that I used to shower with. I used to sit on it during the shower because I had a lot of surgeries and stuff like that. Oh. So um, I've had about under a dozen surgeries and, uh, um, you know, because I didn't want to, you know, hurt myself while I was in the shower. I had a shower bench and I would stick my laptop on the shower bench and point the webcam towards the TV. That was before I had a capture card, before I had anything. Um, so I was starting off with nothing. So, so how did... that's, where, that's, that's where everyone starts. They yeah. start with nothing, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. So how did you get your uh, start in content creation? Well, like I said, I've always been a gamer and I've always loved watching content. And I think we're talking possibly between 2008 and now. Um, that's where I was studying media, doing media studies. Um, you know, like I said, TV and radio broadcasts. And at the time, I was watching a ton of YouTube, especially gaming content. Um, and I thought, do you know what? What I've learned from my media studies, could I implement that into some kind of content creation? Um, so... I did give it a try on YouTube for the first few months. Um, yeah, I think when you first start doing content creating, it's not the best. Let's be honest. It's not your best um, content. You know, you're a bit rusty. Um, you might do some mistakes. But I thought, you know what? Let's, let's give it a try. And I did that. I enjoyed it. Um, but I, I thought, you know what? This could be better. But what I'm going to do is I down a little bit and literally I'm just going to concentrate on my media studies and... And then 2010, um, I thought, you know what? I'm going to really give this a try. So I created a YouTube channel called Multi Game Freaks. Mm -hmm. Yes, Multi Game Freaks. And I think the first few years, it was just, it was just normal gameplay. You know, like you get your co-op gameplays, your single play campaigns. Um, and I thought, do you know what? I like this. You know, and I think some of my favorite YouTube channels was the Oddcast. You know, mm -hmm. that, I think that's what got me into content creation. Um, you know, I think they really influenced me um, to actually start doing content creation and especially doing sort of Minecraft content. Um, but for me, I think the first few years really enjoyed it because back then it was just for fun. You know? Right. Like, I think, that's, I mean, we can talk about this later on, but many people always said you know what i'm in it for the views i'm in it for the money but for me it was all about having fun and showcasing your content to your friends you know because that's normally what you do with content at right at the beginning you you send your links to your friends you know and and they comment and say well done i, I enjoyed that you know and then it progressed into something more and um, exactly I was, yeah you know and i think that's the reason why I got into content creation because I did media studies. And then of course I watched a lot of YouTube um, videos. Right. I think, I think you hit the nail on the head. Yeah. Most people just, you know, start getting into it for fun and 
that's kind of how I was. I was watching LEA and some of the guys, T Martin, and yeah. they're still they're still around. Um, you know, a lot of the Call of Duty YouTubers is what I grew up watching, and yeah. uh, it definitely was something for me. Like I didn't know the technology. I didn't know they were taking like a little capture device and plugging an HDMI cable in and and recording <laughs> yeah. their xbox i had no idea about the technology i had no idea about editing i had nothing so i kind of learned as i went along and i was always the person that was a hands-on learner like i have to know how to do it and so i started doing it but i didn't start taking it seriously i had multiple youtube channel names over the years i believe my first youtube channel name was the optimus prime 122 and Ooh, like you know that. that was my first channel name and it was random videos it wasn't gaming content it was just random content that i was just spewing out there because i didn't know uh at the time i didn't know what made good content and what didn't mm -hmm. and and all that and then fast forward to 2018 um so like years later uh you know, fast forward to that, and that's when I started RCW, um, which is a, the wrestling promotion, the wrestling type of content uh, that I have out on my channel um, on the YouTubes, and this is pretty much primarily what I do on Glimish, uh, yeah. you know, and stuff like that, and that was originally only going to last two seasons. Fast forward a couple years later, and we're at 12 13 now so wow you know that's and i think part of that is because of the fact that i took advantage of the tools that a game had given me uh last episode we had fight mikes uh a fellow content creator that does wrestling and we talked about the creation tools that you have you have a hundred cost slots which is a hundred creator wrestlers you have a thousand image slots where you, you have an image uploader where you can upload your own images to the game you have all these kinds of different tools and, and plus the most important tool your mind your your head yeah um you know you got you got all these different tools to utilize it um and i just applied real life uh inspirations uh to to these characters known as the outlaw family and i just happened to and then eventually it got to a point where i started doing my own promos and started doing um you know unscripted promos so where i would just go on audacity and then as soon as i would create the voice i figured out how i wanted to talk because i didn't want it to sound like me but yeah. i still wanted it to be me but not sound like me so i had to develop the voice so he just talks really lower and this is how he talks and then <laughs> you know and that's how i would do it was that was that way and that's how i got into it um you know so i want to say on that though all that had all that work you put in all those tools makes your content unique right it's exactly different. you know like that's what people need to realize there's tools out there there's techniques out there to make your content different. Like your channel, your YouTube channel, your Twitch, your Glemish, think of it as being like a sweet shop. You know, you go past the window, the first thing you see is something unique. What's that? I want to try that. I've never had that before. I want to get that. That's what you're going to think of. Like make your channel like a sweet shop. Right. And I do love sweets, but that's what I think you've got to try to base your content around you know like it's got to be different it's got to be unique and like i said your yours is unique and that's that's what's important you know like you don't want to be exact same as many other thousands of content creators out there right you're literally just going to be lost in the crowd that and wrestling within itself is already a niche community it's not like yeah. fortnite or call of duty that's uh established and uh flight mics and i had talked about that on the previous episode which you can catch all the episodes here on glimish live as well on spotify and apple podcasts as well and um youtube as well my youtube channel too also has another version so you have three different ways that you can listen or watch the podcast here and um yeah i, I was saying to fight mics that it's a very very niche community it's not something that is um 
you know, anything like um, any other uh, game. I, I, I've never seen any other game with the exception of NBA uh, mm. that allows you to make players, allows you to uh, make your own arenas uh, too as well. You can do expansion teams, uh, what's called My League, which is like a franchise mode. You can yeah. create a whole entire team and everything. But in terms of a sports genre, those are the only two games that I know of that even allow you to do that. And think of how many sports games that are out there, you know, like FIFA, hockey. Even hockey doesn't even allow you to do that, really, uh, yeah, no, no. as much. Not as not as much as, uh, I mean, it does have customization tools, but nowhere does, near. But not to that, uh, that extent, yeah. Right, nowhere near to the extent of WWE 2K. And I think that's, I think a lot of people, like, don't, understand that is you know because a lot of people they'll be so quick to say oh universe mode's boring and i'll ask them okay did you use all the tools that the game gave you like i'll say that and they'll most likely they won't say anything so that's a solid no and you know then you know i'll be like okay take inspiration from your real life start taking inspiration from other things like you, sometimes you have to go beyond the game. The game can only give you so much. That's not to say that WWE 2K is perfect, or this game's perfect, or Battlefield's perfect, or this is perfect, okay, or this perfect. is perfect, or whatever. Nothing is. Nothing is perfect, but if you don't have that creative mind, or if you don't think to make a game fun for yourself, then it's not going to be fun. Yes, there are games that are just bad. I'm not saying that there isn't. Um, but if a game gives you those tools and you don't take advantage of them, that's kind of a you problem, not the game's problem. Now, that's not to say that WWE can't improve on a lot of things. I I have a bunch of wish list videos where I could we could go this whole entire podcast if we wanted to and talk about that the whole enti- <laughs> entire time about how to improve stuff. But that's that's. <laughs> the bottom line is like you have to you know i think you hit the nail on the head when you said you you have to make your content unique to you like you can't just yeah. be a cop out or a copycat to someone else like you have to be mg live or you have to be the botch tv you have to ha- establish a brand for yourself you know Cause i used to watch like on mixer loads of wrestling because i think the wrestling community on Mixer was really good, like some oh, really yeah. good content creators. But the ones that I was complaining, oh, like I'm not, I'm getting nowhere with my wrestling content. But all they're doing is just playing the game. That's all they're doing. Like you've got to be different, you know. Like right. I see so many streamers and content creators complain, but like I said, use the tools, you know. Right. The tools exactly. are there to help you create some different types of content. You know, right use it use it guys right exactly like there's you can upload your own images to the game so you can literally yeah, yeah. make your own ring mat ring, ring arena or everything make your own characters make your own titles if you want to add like what i do is i do promos with text boxes for the characters that don't talk so i have to add the crowd noise in i have to do this do this do this do this yes it's extra work but it makes it different than the next guy, and that's the whole point. And you, that ad work, you literally reap the rewards. End of the day, you know. Like, right, exactly. You're gonna, yeah, that's it. Exactly. Now I read your Glimish profile, and it said that you've been involved in gaming development and testing games and all that stuff. So what was that like, and how has that influenced you as a content creator through the ten years that you've? um ben in content creation do you think that some of those things uh do you think that some of those things kind of like you mentioned earlier the Mm. studies that you mentioned in school the studies that you had in school uh you know how that applied how can you apply that to what you're doing as far as content creation so did that any did any of that like overlap for you in terms of like gaming development did you transfer that into what you're doing now on Glimish and YouTube and all the other platforms that you've been on? Well, um, well, first thing, game development, um, like I said, it was 
the uh, VMC, and they used to get um, invites from you know big game companies. Like I said, I tested Halo Five, Watch Dogs Two, Forza Horizon Four, For Honor, Ghost Recon, Division One and Two, and so on. And um, people think game testing is just sitting there playing games. Oh no, it's not. <laughs> you just don't sit there playing games, you know. You were there's so much writing going on, like you're just writing, there's forms to fill out. You um, you know, you're literally behind the scenes, you know, seeing the game progress, seeing the game get into a stage where where we see it today, you know, and when games are released. Um, like I said, what I've learned in game development and testing um helped me because back in the day on youtube i used to review games and i knew what went into gaming development since i, I did the testing you know and it helped me to review games because at the end of the day i think a lot of content creators out there or, or even the you know normal gamers don't understand the amount of work that goes into making these games and and we've had stories, haven't we, um, you know, over the years about game developers literally leaving the jobs, you know, getting depressed, overworked. Um, but what I'll, I'll say, I implemented the knowledge into my gaming content with the reviews, really. Um, but I think it's been a great journey. I mean, I got paid for it. You know, you don't, you don't work for free, of course. So I got That's paid a for it. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> um... And I always get the question, like, how do you get into game testing? You, um, but I, th I think I would highly say, like, re recommend is make sure you want to type, you want to write. Because if you don't want to do all that, you're not a game tester. People just think it's just, you know. But I would highly recommend anyone, if you want to get into game development, you know. Um, I say, I'm on Discord, you know, send me a DM. And I'll send you, you know, the right way, guys. But I'll say that's what really helped me in my content was the knowledge, the amount of work that goes into developing games. Yeah, because I've noticed, um, I don't know if you feel this way too, and this is not to throw any type of gaming journalist type of company under the bus or anything, but mm. a lot of those people, I feel, aren't like real gamers because they're just people that play a game for an hour and it's like yeah. they base the review off of the hour that they played or off of the 45 yeah. minutes that they played and it's like you have to play a little bit more than that with some games like minecraft you can probably get away with it because minecraft there's not much to do in minecraft there's not much to it but like a like an adventure game or you know, something that has a little bit more to it, like, you can't just play it for an hour and expect to get everything, like, the meat and potatoes and the dessert right out of it. Like, you have to get, like, you have to play a few hours, like, not just an hour and then totally base your gaming experience off of that. Um, like I said, I used to review games, and I used to have it on my own website, and then we used to get review cards, and um, normally they would say... Okay, you gotta play so many hours of this. So that's what the that's what the contact that's what the main contact uh, contacts you and say, right, we want you to play up to this level or maybe there's so many hours. And for me, I always even though they say okay, do two hours, I always do that extra of two or three hours. Right. There's some games that I literally completed. Um, but some games it's I mean, for instance, an RPG, you're not gonna finish that. Um, you know, that's literally impossible. Because sometimes you might actually get a review code. It could be literally a day before the game is released. Um, yep. So you're not going to be able to finish an RPG. But I think if you want to really get what the game is all about, you're going to need, I'll say, four, five, six hours. Which some, some of these reviewers, I know, like they don't really play much. Right. <laughs> Maybe even probably a half an hour, some of them. Um, but I know what you're getting out there, you know, like... I mean, I'm not going to name names or websites, but you can just tell that they haven't really played the game much. Right. And I mean, it, it's it's a different experience for everybody. Some people can play a couple hours of a game and get the gist of it, but it also depends on the game. Um, yeah. You know, like if it's a Madden or 
WWE. Like, mm. WWE on the surface. If you don't use the image uploader, if you don't use all those tools, if you just play it for a wrestling game, it's literally a wrestling simulation game. Yeah. But to content creators that make universe mode, that use those tools, it's a totally different... Their mind and the way that they think about the game and the game's features and the game's tools is totally different because they're not just sitting there thinking about it as a casual wrestling fan playing the game. Like, yeah. you know, that they think about it as, okay, what tools can I use to make content out of it? And that's why I kind of trust their opinions more than just the casual player because you have the casual player, you have the hardcore fan, or you have your, you know, your content creators, people that make content on the game. And I'd rather, you know, trust the people like the Dank Ops and Brandon Does Everything and um, Simply Better AM to name a few the guys that have been doing wrestling content for a long time. And I'd rather trust their opinions because they're the ones that are making content on the game that, have, that for hours, for hours. And they're the mm. ones that do it full time. So that's totally different than, you know, just a casual wrestling fan. That's just sitting there playing a wrestling match for a little bit with his friends. And that's not to, before anybody, you know, attacks me or whatever, that's not to bash casual players. I think every player has their place in a gaming community. But that's but that's just my opinion on it when people are like, oh, this is crap or this is crap or this is crap or this is crap or whatever. It's like, you can have your opinion, but the question is, like, what opinion is going to be more valuable remains subjective. And to me, that having that opinion of content creators, those people that are going to make do the stuff that I do. Like, mm. th that's why when I review stuff or when I do wish lists, I think of it in that way. And I put a disclaimer in the video, like, this is how I'm going to grade it or this is how I'm going to think of it. Like, I'm not thinking of this as a casual player that's just putting on a wrestling game just to play it. I'm thinking of it as somebody who wants to make their own wrestling promotion, who wants their own championships, who wants their own wrestling show. That's how I'm going to think of it. And, and to your viewers, can I just say something, guys? You've got to check out his content. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's some of the best wrestling content I've seen, for, especially from WWE games. I, it's different and it's something that I've never seen before. So, you know, just please check it out, guys. It's wow, the amount of work he puts in. Like, he deserves, I mean, he deserves the likes, he deserves the subs, you know? Um, yeah. Well, thanks, man. Thanks for uh, boosting my ego even further. But <laughs> <laughs> no, man, you deserve it, man. You, you, you deserve it, you know? Like, I've over the years, I've seen so many content creators put so much work into it, but just don't get the credit, you know? And it is upsetting. It yeah. is really upsetting because literally you put that amount of work into it and then you're not getting the credit. And literally it could affect your mental health thinking, I'm putting all this work into it, but I'm not getting no credit. I'm getting no reward. Do whatever, I just... whatever that like reward what? is. Oh, I think for me, rewards for me, it's about making people smile, making people... You know, I mean, they might have had an hard day at work. You know, if they come home and watch your content, you made them smile, you made them feel better for themselves. You know, I think that's what, right. for me, content should be all about, you know? Right, exactly. For me, the most rewarding thing is when, you, is when, you know, you've been in my position where you've met wrestlers. Um, I've met the Butcher and the Blade twice. Wow. Wow. Um, I've met Allie twice. Um, I've met chris jericho one time um yeah i got to talk to him which was awesome i met mick foley um oh what I, a legend uh yeah um i met jerry the king luller i met him i met Dar darby allen i'm um, from aew i've met sammy guevara from aew i've met santana and ortiz orange cassidy chris statlander um who else did i who else did I meet? Uh, trying to think who else. Who else? Who else? Who else? I know I met other more people. Um, I've I had Diana Perrazzo um, from Impact sign something for me. And speaking of which, going to Bound for Glory. That's going to be a fun time. 
um, in a few weeks, actually. It's going to be awesome. I'm excited to do that. Um, I've talked to Rosemary from Impact, uh, Cody Diener from Impact. Um, you know, and it's honestly, people ask, how do you get these opportunities? Of course, I have to have the money to go and meet these people. But also, I'm a fan. And when people, that's the thing. People in a field that you want to get into, or regardless mm -hmm. of what it is, they yeah. they see they see the passion within you. They know that they know that you are passionate about what you um, about what you do, and they know that you're not that average fan. I met Sting. Um, oh wow! I met him oh. too, and just to hear him say, "Well." Um, it's nice of you to go back and watch the things before your time because I would go back and I would watch, you know, him at Starcade 97. I was born in 99, yeah. so that was before my time. And I would go back and I would watch, you know, those things. And he's like, the fact that you even do that shows that you are a true fan because you'll go back and watch stuff that, that you're too young to remember or you weren't even alive um, to, to remember these things. But I was I respect that though, like amount of passion, that, that determination to make something out of it. Like I think that's for people that that's that's a lot of for me respect because wow, like you don't get really many content creators or people that are passionate about something put that amount of effort. You know, like you've met mm -hmm. your favorite superstars, you've met your heroes. You know, you've talked to them like. To actually going out there you know trying to make something out of it and i think you know gg for that man like you know i that's... did meet uh i did meet kevin owens too i met him too um so that was that was fun i still got the video of it too um, oh wow of the video chat him and i had um and i met you know uh fred tatashore who is a voice actor the voice actor of nikolai from call of duty black of zombies Ooh, I, met wow. I met him I met Steve Bloom, who's the voice actor of Tank Dempsey from Black Ops Zombies. Um, he was also in Transformers, uh, Gurren Lagann, and a bunch of other animes from the 90s. Cowboy Bebop, he was uh, Spike right. yeah. um, from from that. And I met uh, Michelle Ruff, who voiced Yoko from Gurren Lagann. Um, one of my favorite female protagonists ever in anime. I met uh, or I didn't meet. I want to so bad, so. Uh, so bad. Uh, Jeremy Lee. I actually do have a signed um, autograph from Jeremy Lee, the voice actress of V, uh, female V from Cyberpunk 2077, um, nice. as well as the voice actress of Lucy from Fairy Tale, and the voice actress of the imagined uh, Fortnite character uh, from. Uh, I believe a season ago, a season or two ago. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you know, it, it comes right back there with the passion and just the drive to do something. And speaking of passion, obviously, you've been in content creation for a decade. Um, yeah. And a lot of people don't understand. You mentioned mental health and the taxing that it can have on your mental health. Um, mm. You know, and for people who do it, consistently on a uh, on a on a daily basis and they either do it they either stream three times a week or stream three times a week but also on their off days when they're not live they're making videos they're posting tiktoks they're doing whatever um and oftentimes there's a little word that we like to call burnout that can happen where yeah. you you just don't want to do it anymore or you just don't have the ideas and you need that long break or whatever. Has this ever happened to you in your 10 years of content creation? And is there anything that you have uh, in terms of advice that you can give to people who want to get into content creation to make the make burnout happen less often? Yeah, well, like I said, I've been content creation 10 years um but recently i did have a burnout um about three months ago i literally stopped streaming um for about two months um wow. yeah that's a while you know, i think well like i said i i needed that break because i used to go live like 
five days a week and sometimes seven days a week while wow, working as well. And it wow. literally got so much. And and literally, like, I used to come home from work, you know, and get something to eat, get a shower, and literally go laugh. Literally went laugh, like, wow. straight away. And it got so much. And I think, for me, if you don't want to get burnt out, I would say, like, you don't want breaks constantly because literally, like, I've heard stories of people having breaks, come back, and literally they've got to start from the beginning again. I don't want to see that for any other content creator. I would say, I recommend maybe literally having three days a week mm -hmm. and maybe once, let me do a little stream on the weekend. But, and this is this is, this is is huge, um, times, you know, mm -hmm. a, a, a schedule. Of I would course. say, would you get rid of schedules? For me, I would. Literally, that was another pressure because I used to get home from work and saying, "Oh crap, I've got to literally go live literally within an hour. I've got to do this and do that." That puts a lot of mental strength on yep. top. Saying, "Okay, am I going to maybe to make this stream? I'm going to, I will, I will make this stream, but it's too much." So I would say, get rid of um, schedules. Mm -hmm. You don't need them. I don't think you need schedules. Um, End of the day, if you go live, people will get notifications, maybe on Twitter, Discord, and even if you're on Twitch or wherever, you'll get a notification on your Twitch app. I don't right. think it I don't think it's needed. And another I think what's important is the content that you're making. Mm -hmm. I think you, you I see some streamers that should do the exact same thing for seven days a week. Exact mm -hmm. same thing, seven days a week. You know, like it's like watching, um, I know, some kind of um, TV program. Imagine watching that every single day. Unless you really like it. Like, you know, that's that's yeah, another yeah. thing. But, yeah. Yeah, I, I get, see that, I get it, your point, though. But, but in terms of content creation, I think sometimes it's important maybe just have a little... Okay, well, if you, you do your main content, maybe Monday, Wednesday, and Friday... And maybe on the, between a Tuesday and a Thursday, I know I did say maybe stream like three days a week. But if mm -hmm. you want to stream five days a week and two of those days, do something different, do something fun, maybe little party games, you know? Right. Um, I think, because like I said, I used to be, a, well, I am sort of like a Battlefield stream. I stream a lot of Battlefield and I used to do that five, six, seven days a week. I love Battlefield. But there's only so much you can actually enjoy that making content. Right. You know? I think I think for me, uh, for the wrestling, is that with the way that I do it anyway, um, you know, with creating the stories of these characters, taking these characters that have absolutely nothing other than a name, and yeah. making and making their stories, and constantly thinking of stuff that's different. Like even though I have Rise. RCW Rise on Mondays, RCW uh, the regular show on Wednesdays, RCW Dusk on Fridays. Each show is different in its own way, and That's it. and mm -hmm. I think I think for me it's having two pay per views a season with twenty episodes a season and having that schedule. And even then, I took a week off from streaming this week. I, I didn't really stream this week, but I recorded stuff. Um, you know, and to me that's a little bit different than you know. Uh, just worrying about streaming because i didn't have a card prepared i didn't have i didn't have uh, a, a a card prepared so i was like nope not streaming this week take some time record some stuff and even and even then like i take after let's say the 10th episode it's like a mid-season finale which is the first pay-per-view of a season and yeah. and then i take a week break from rcw i don't do anything that doesn't mean i don't stream at all that just means i don't stream that particular content for a week so that i can so that people that haven't watched it can catch up on my youtube channel they can catch up like it's almost like netflix they can catch up on stuff and be done and be ready um you know for the next episode um but even then i really just think it's branching out to other games like using other games to expand the wrestling universe like with my WNBA yeah like yeah yeah that's what I'm going to say like you use you know your um, basketball you've even done 
um, Cyberpunk. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> wow. Like, the amount of ideas you've got in that brain. Like, yeah. I'm... I'm so proud the science is not out there right now thinking, do not, we want that botch's brain. We need his brain. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And it's weird because the cyberpunk idea actually just came out of nowhere, really. Um, originally, I was just going to do it with my voice, where Brian Outlaw talks. Yeah. But then I saw this video that somebody did where they took all of the lines from the game and put it into a video. And I was like mp3 convert that <laughs> mp3 convert it it's it's hours and hours of lines so i have to look through hours and hours of lines and then i have to choose what lines so like for example um v um i love Jeremy lee so much that i chose her as the character uh that i wanted to speak to first so he meet basically the story goes um it it intertwines with uh 2k19 so this goes all the way back to 2k19 um yeah. we're at 2k22 now for those that aren't uh, familiar with the timeline um but this series goes back to 2k19 in which the fiend bray wyatt um possesses sky outlaw it's kind of like and by the way for those of you that are updated on wwe I came up with that idea before Alexa did it. Wow. So, before Alexa did it, it was my idea. Oh, brand. Like, oh, amazing brand. It, like, it, and not to discredit Alexa. Absolutely, she absolutely killed that character. Um, absolutely killed it. Um, but I came up with that idea before even that idea existed um, for Alexa Bliss. And so, basically... She gets possessed by the fiend. Sky gets possessed by the fiend, and then um, after a while, she gets out of the possession of the fiend. But then she starts seeing visions of herself in the future as a corpo agent, which is a corpo is one of the career paths that you can take in Cyberpunk, where you work for the government and you're and you go rogue, and um, you know you're and obviously it is. Let's see, 2077, That's that would make me 70-something years old. Um, wow. You know, Jeez. There, in, 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 by, the time I, by the time 2077 comes around, I'll be 70-something. Um, and all the outlaws, all the characters in my universe have ages. All of them are, certain, are of a certain age. And Sky is 20 years old. So that would mean that she's probably like 72 at that point. But with futuristic technology they're actually if you look on the wiki um mm. uh, of the characters you can, they can tell you what age and there's a character in there that is 80 years old but wow. she looks she has wrinkles you know because they they modeled the faces after the voice actors who played them um so keanu reeves is in the game as johnny silverhand so his face is johnny silverhand's face um, yeah. but the character in the game is 80 something years old. V is actually, I think like 30 something, um, in, in the game, which Jeremy Lee is like 31, I think in real life. Um, so it makes sense, but sky is 20 years old. And so basically how this ties into the series is sky is, um, there's technology that makes her young for forever. She looks yeah. young. And there's actually a disease. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the movie called The Orphan. But I've seen it, yeah. There's, there's a disease that makes you mm. look young, even though that you're not. Um, You know, I forget what it's called. It's actually a legit thing, too. It's yeah. a real thing. Um, It's something with your hormones or something that basically makes you not age physically. So you look like a child. But you're not a child. You're like 30-something years old or 40 or whatever. Um, you know, and so... Anyways, how this ties into Cyberpunk is... There's this thing called brain dances in the game. And brain dances are basically memories of a person. And in the game, without spoiling anything... I'm not going to spoil anything. Um, if you haven't played the game by now... Like, that's kind of your loss at this point. <laughs> well... <Whoa>. Um, <laughs> Um, you know, if you haven't played the game by now, but 
I, I won't spoil anything for those who still want to enjoy it for themselves. Um, but there's a brain dance sequence in the game where you put on a helmet and you view a person's memory, but you don't just view it. You can hear, see, and feel everything that that person did. And in this particular sequence, a robber robs a store and he gets shot in the stomach. And then V wakes up and she's like, oh shit, like I got, I got shot. Why do I feel like I just got shot? And you know, Judy's like, well, that's what happens. You Imagine getting shot in the um, privates. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> that's, that's, that's what happens. And so Brian, which, which in this case is my character, he goes, he views his sister's dreams or the visions that she's having in her head. Um, and that's where he meets V. And people are wondering, how in the hell is he talking to somebody from the future? Um, well, because I modeled my V, because you can customize what your character looks like. I modeled yeah. my V after Sky, after the character in WWE. So I spent 30 minutes in the character creator just so I could get her to look somewhat similar to the way she looks in WWE just to make it a little bit more realistic. Yeah. And so basically he meets V, he starts talking to her. Um you know and she's the first thing she says to him is why the long face? And and keep in mind they they don't know what each other look like. They don't know. Mm. Um uh the only way he could know is if he looked at is if he looked at the memories and in the game you can go into the bathroom and yeah, look, yeah, in, look yeah. in a mirror and see yourself um so he's like and he says i think if i can get the voice right um he he says just because my sister's having visions of herself in the future and she has no idea what's going on or didn't you get the picture stop with the games v and tell me what you know um oh God. you know then <laughs> then you know, she's like, fine, forget I even asked. And then he says, and then he says, oh, that's sass. Now this is going to be fun. Um, you know, and so he meets, he meets V and he, you know, he talks to her and, and because V is Night City is the city in cyberpunk. So he's like getting exposed to all this. He doesn't know what all this technology is. He doesn't know what yeah. any of this is. Uh, and so He's relying on V to tell him all of this information. And eventually they start to get to know about each other, about each other's lives, things like that. And I just take, basically I take a line from the game. So for instance, I'll take a line. Um, I think I have a line where V says, um, she says, ah, fuck me or something like that. Um, I, I, I think she gets like hurt or something and she says, ah, fuck me or whatever. So, so then, um, so then I could say something like, not until you take me to dinner first, uh, <laughs> you know, or, or something like that, you <laughs> yeah. know, and all the lines that I say are unscripted. I don't script yeah. any of them. Um, I just take a line and then I figure out what I want to say afterwards and I've done that with Judy, um, Carrie, uh, and some of the other characters in the game. Johnny Silverhand, I did it with him too. But because Keanu Reeves is in the Matrix, I made a Matrix reference. Um, wow! In in in, in the in, in the episode where he meets Johnny, where he says, "Don't you have Trinity to save, Mister Anderson?" And then Mister Anderson, Thomas Anderson, is neo yeah that's his yeah. human name in in the movie and he says don't you have some guy named morpheus to report to morpheus is the um played by lawrence fishburne and and um he says warner brothers didn't ask you to didn't ask you to make a sequel and that's the plot of the new matrix film um it is basically they're asking keanu reeves to make a sequel to his trilogy of video games but it's the trilogy of the matrix you know um and 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 then i say no wait 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 wait. this isn't a warner brothers game 
This is CD Projekt Red. So I mentioned the game's developer. I broke the fourth wall and mentioned the game's developer while in, yeah, the, in yeah. the line. Um, and it's really, really fun. It's the most fun I've ever had doing a series. Um, it, it's just because originally V wasn't supposed to be a part of that or none of the characters were. But I thought if I added that, it would be a little bit more fun and entertaining. I'm actually working on the next episode where he finds out that V is alive. Um, because in in the previous in the previous episode, couple previous episodes, a little bit of a spoiler for those who haven't seen it, but um, V has a conversation with Brian Outlaw, and she talks about how she's gonna die. Because the whole premise of the game is V, her personality is being taken over by Johnny's. Um, his, yeah. pers his personality construct is inside her head, and she's the only one that can hear him or see him. And she knows that who she is as a person is going to cease to exist because Johnny's going to take over her body. And the whole idea of the game is to... There's a, multiple endings of the game, but the whole idea of, of her is her trying to get her body back and her trying to live again. Um, you know, and so she's basically like, I took a line from the game where she finds out that she's going to die. And she's like, if you can't help me, what the hell do I do? And then Brian says, well, we have to wait. Um, you know, death comes comes for us anyway. And do then, I watch? I think you should, get yourself, you should get yourself into the movie business, I think. Yeah. That's what you need to do. You know, I, I may mean? make I that could. money, you know? I could. Eventually, I, I could. And, um... She says, I have to die. And then I took a gunshot from the game. Um, a Johnny's pistol. The pistol that you get um, in, in, in the game. And then all you hear is Brian screaming V, V, V. And the screen goes black. So you think that she's dead. Um, that she had taken her own life. And so, um, you know, there's a couple episodes where he's upset. Because he's testing her. Like, he's flirting with her. He's testing her, seeing if she's going to fall in love with him. Just to see if... Just to see if she's more focused on him and not the mission. Which is figuring out what... Uh. Why Sky's having those visions. He's into her, but at the same time, he's like, I'm going to test you to see if you're going to just fall in love with me like every other woman. And, and you know, that's the way it's going to be. Um, and... You know, and V kind of sees that. She tests him, too. Um, she's kind of like, oh, I wonder if I say something to him, he's going to take the bait. Um, you know, or whatever. So they're kind of playing this little game with one another. And V discovers... Um, v, dis v, again, um, he's talking to Judy. Um, and... And... Uh, I, I think the one line that I said, well, I thought I would solve all my problems with V being here, but now I got another one. And then all you hear is V's voice say, got a problem and you're calling me? And 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 then uh, Judy says, V, is that you? I thought you were gone. And the episode ends because they all they think that V's dead. Yeah. Um, and, you know, then... In the in the little teaser that I shared on my TikTok, um, V ends up, or uh, she ends up saying, I forget what it was. It was something like, "So this is goodbye." It's them saying goodbye to one another, and he says, "No, this isn't goodbye," because the DLC for Cyberpunk's coming out next year. Phantom Liberty is the name of the DLC, and in the trailer. V takes an oath to the United States of America. And, and you know, Johnny's like, you took that oath. Bad idea. And, you know, so I took that part of the line and I said, you took an oath. Remember? We got a lot more cities left to burn. Because oh. in the first, the, the first trailer, in the reveal trailer at E3, um, Johnny Silverhand says, wake up wake the fuck up samurai we have a city to burn um so you know i have night city to burn so you know th and then i'm gonna do more 
when the DLC comes out, and that means you're going to have more lines, more quotes that you never heard before, um, you know, and stuff like that. But the thing is, I'll give you guys a little bit of a a little bit of a spoiler if you guys want. Oh, here turn, we go, guys. Here we turn, go. Get ready. <laughs> tur turns out, all it is is just Sky's learning a lesson. Like it, it's all it's all dreams. It's all it's it's not real. It's all you know dreams of of her learning a lesson about life, and you'll find out what that lesson is, um, in the next episode. I'll tell you guys, um, what that lesson is. Uh, so you'll find out what that is. But yeah, that's pretty much, um, yeah, you know, figuring out ways to be unique. Um, with that discussion, you know, obviously me yeah. talking about the cyberpunk and stuff, um, you know, it's, it's figuring out ways to be unique and figuring out ways that work. And, and speaking of, you know, Twitch, I know that we talked about Twitch and everything else I've talked about, uh, in the very first episode, I had shortcut on and I was talking with him about the downfall of Twitch and the downfall of Mixer and seeing all these platforms, and now Trovo seems to be going down uh, a not-so-good path either. Um, but what do you think is the biggest problem with video content platforms like YouTube and Twitch today that probably could turn some people away from even trying content creation? Like, let's say, you know, somebody's just trying trying to get out with, uh, with uh, content creation, trying to start, and they want to start streaming. But now... There's people getting swatted. There's lack of TOS enforcement. There's unjust, unjustified bans coming out or whatever. Um, we obviously mentioned the hot tub streams and the OnlyFans mm. 2.0 and everything else. So what do you think is the biggest issue uh, on these platforms? Do you think it's some people say it's discoverability? Some people say it's TOS. Some people say it's a combination of things. But what do you think is the biggest issue that is turning that may turn some people away from even wanting to start streaming or a youtube channel for instance i think right first thing let's, let's go back to the beginning i think all this started once streamers the big streamers started making big lots of money yeah big... that's where all, all this is where it's all started from and people trying to be that next big thing you know right and then people saying you know what i want to get there i want to literally get a fast track to the top this is why you start seeing some of these hot tub streams, some of this other sort of sexual content that's on there. And why would you want to be associated with that type of content? You know, that sometimes can put people off from making content that's out there. Yeah. You know, okay. and, and I think there's a lot of, I think there's too much focus on money, you know, in, in content creation, you know, and um, I think if you want to start, you want to start, like having fun, you know, playing your best games, etc. You know, and um, <laughs> it is a topic that's been going on for for so many years about Twitch. You know, like what's their overall plan? You know, what's their goal of you know for Twitch? You know, is right. it? By the looks of it, you know, they just want to make as much money as possible. You know, any no business what... wants to do that. I mean, that's kind of the I, whole goal. I agree with that, but if it comes at um like say like there's a lot of kids that's watching this type of content on twitch this sort of like half sort of nudity um content you know there's parents out there not knowing what their children are watching you know they're thinking oh they're watching twitch twitch is where you just watch people play video games which a lot of it is not you know we've seen different types of content on there that should not belong on switch you know like there's other for places sure. out there for that you know and um but in terms of people trying to get into content creation is there's different ways you can go around it you know like i said we talked about nudity you're competing against those type of streamers but also it's competition you know right like you're trying to compete. You try to be sort of unique. That that's what we've been saying earlier. You know, a bit try to be unique, but people probably not willing to put that back into it. That amount of dedication. 
right you know which can put people off yeah like and I, also i feel like it's the work ethic like part yeah. of it's like part of it's just like the um the like people are like oh you know oh it's like i mentioned to you earlier about what um people saying oh universe mode is boring uh we're not creative like you so universe mode is boring it's like well yeah. if you're not using the tools that a game gives you whose fault's that like that's it like you know like that's 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 the big thing about it is you have to take advantage of the tools and and i do agree that you know i feel like it leaves like a bad thought in someone when, you know, people are starting to lose the focus of having fun and more the focus of, you know, how can I make money off of this? And problem. I, I will say, I will just be the first one to say sex does sell. Um, and it does. Um, mm. I, there's a term called fan service. I'm pretty sure most of y'all have heard of that term where it's a scene in a movie that adds nothing to the plot it or anything else it's just there for the sake of making fans happy um like a fight scene or a, a love or a sex scene in a, in a show or something like that um you know or whatever now to each their own make the content that you want to make but i i feel like there comes to a point where it's like okay yeah, I understand that parents need to be responsible with what their kids are consuming but at some point, you have to trust your kid to yeah. not consume that stuff. And plus, as a platform, you are responsible for what gets promoted on your mm. site. You are, because you're the yeah. one paying for those ads. You're the one paying for all the all that stuff. You're the one putting... I, I'm not sure who puts what on the front page, but I know that uh, Shortcat had mentioned you know, the concern that he has... For younger eyes for his nephews like um hot tub streams with half naked women in them. um yeah you know and 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 let's say you know some 10 year old kid named johnny comes across that you know thing and there's no barrier there's no like i know that youtube has an age restriction barrier I know that they have, uh, Glimish has a mature label that you can put on your stream. Um, you know, certain things like that, but there's only tags that you can do on Twitch. I, I correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there is any type of barrier preventing somebody from watching somebody stream unless they're, you know, uh, I, I, I don't think there is. Nothing uh, is. Uh, I, I, I don't think there is like it. And, like, I remember when, it's like when you go and you buy a rated M game, you, you have to show ID, or yeah. whatever, or a parent has to say, is it okay for your kid to play this? Um, that type of thing. And, and honestly, kids are gonna get exposed to things that they shouldn't be exposed to, because they're kids. They're curious, you know, they're gonna, but at the same, and, and at the same time, parents need to take over. Um, you know, they need to know what their kids are watching, know what their kids are being exposed to. But I also think that that doesn't negate the role that a platform has in promoting that type of content. Um, like I said, Twitch has been known for sort of game streaming, you know, so yeah, parents yeah. will just think, yeah, my kids is watching Twitch. I've heard that's a great platform to watch in video games. They're not expecting to see, you know, that sexual content, you know, so right. You can't really blame the parents because no. they don't realize because they might not be not much, they don't know much about Twitch, but they might read you know like it's it's streaming games, you know. So you really that's what it was originally designed yeah, for in the first it. place. Really, I mean, you know, like people know what Pornhub is, people know what SpankBang is, people know what yeah. MyFreeCams.com is, people know what that stuff is. Um, and, and parents are well aware of that, I would hope, um, in this generation, I would hope, but, you know, that, that's totally different, um, you know, and I, I think you hit the nail on the head there when you mentioned that, yeah, I'm not gonna blame the parents completely, because maybe they're not well aware of, they look at Twitch, because Twitch is primarily, you know, focused on gaming, it's very rare that 
you ever come across the hot tub streams really but mm. the fact that it's even a thing and i've seen i've read i've read this story the other day where a girl had streamed live and they were doing the nasty with her boyfriend yep. on stream and she got banned for a couple days or whatever it was um and um you know um and, and and it was just one of those things where I'm like, all right. Um, but, you know, I had read that my friend had gotten banned for something that uh, it was deemed to be sexual content. And when I said, what did you... And I was in a Discord with him. We, we Somebody made a joke here and there. I don't know what it was. But, yeah. but the grand scheme of things was he got banned for something that I felt wasn't justified for something like that like i mean if you're gonna ban somebody for you know that i understand if somebody's being sexist racist or any of those things that's totally against tos that that that, that right there um i i i don't like it nobody would like it but come on you're in a discord call with your friends and you're joking around somebody's gonna say something and if and if and if everyone got banned for every little thing that they said, you know, nobody would be on the platform anymore. Um, so, you know, there comes to that fine line of where you got to find that fine line of this is okay. This is not okay. And I think that's the difficulty there is, you know, when you have, um, a girl that's claiming to do ASMR, but she's sucking off a microphone or, <laughs> yeah. you know, something like that, you know, and, 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 it's blatantly right in front of your face too. It's not implied. It's not one of those sexually implied things. It's literally there. And, and it's like, even as an adult, I don't want to see that. And everybody's like, don't watch it. Okay. You know what I to think about this. When you go on Twitter and you mention the word Twitch, the first thing people say is, oh, that sexual site. <laughs> yeah, I think it's sad because I remember when Twitch used to be just in TV when it first started, and then it, then Amazon bought it, and it was just pure gaming. You know, it was yeah. I enjoyed the community back then. You know, there's not only sort of like fighting against each other, not not think about oh, I want to make as much money as possible, or I'll do anything on stream to get to the top. You know, it was nothing right. about that. It was about community, and we've lost that. You know, we've completely lost that. And and the thing about this is like I've seen. Sort of something similar on other platforms, you know, like on, right. on D Live, even on Facebook Gaming, on YouTube, you know. Right. And it's sad to see, like, where's it going? Where is streaming or content creating overall? Where's it going? Like, where's it leading into? You know, I think that's the main concern, you know, going forward with content creation. You know, right. we've seen so many people doing all this type of stuff. And, and I think there's another sad thing that I've seen a lot, what I've just said, is, is fighting against each other. You know, we've seen people being toxic against other streamers because maybe they're doing better than than yourself. It's um, envious. It's envy. That's what it yeah. is. It's jealousy. It's like you're you're living your best life, whatever that is. Like, I've had people jealous of me because I get to meet wrestlers. There are people mm. that'll say, oh, the only reason why you've met them is because you're disabled or because you have a disability and they pity you and they feel sorry for you and stuff like that. And people try to make me feel like shit because of my, you know, accomplishments. And it's like, no, that's that's not cool. Yeah. Like, you know, you're making someone feel like shit because they're successful because you're not as successful as they are. You know, that that's that's, that's just petty and that's dumb but that's the unfortunate thing with the internet and that kind of leads me to a more positive question um Yay. which is a lot of people talk about what they look for in a content creator we talked about unique content and everything yeah. else um so this is kind of like a three-parter question so the first part is what makes you want to follow another content creator like what is that defining factor like everybody's like oh they have to have the personality it's a combination of this um or it's a combination of the game that they're playing or whatever and also the second part is why do you think people should follow you and yeah. the third part of that 
is what are your thoughts on the whole follow for follow thing and why do you think it doesn't work or why do you think it paints the wrong type of message and how can people avoid that well the first question um you know like in terms of content um creation um i think many people will say like um where, where's that oh sorry <laughs> sorry i just um got rid of the um question bit there um for me i want to be i look for someone that i can engage with someone i can talk about something that i enjoy you know like right i don't really follow some of these big streamers because you can't have a conversation with them no you know what i mean not like, likely you can't, can't engage with them i don't know if they was always like that probably not maybe they've changed since they've got bigger i don't know but i want to talk to someone like for instance like with you with yourselves like i used to be huge into wrestling in the actual era but i know i can speak to you i can talk about wrestling to you and and that's what i think content creation should be about is interacting with your community and exactly that's why i follow certain streamers streamers that literally talk to you like another like like, like a friend like a close right. friend you know and that that's that's all i like to follow you know someone about you know it's engagement that's the most important thing is engagement yeah, and engagement can come in different types of ways too. Um, yeah, you know, it's it's not just answering chat, but it's finding a way to keep people engaged. A lot of people, and this again, this is not to toot my own horn, but a lot of people when they watch, you know, the wrestling content that I do, and I do the commentary, and I'm doing the, the doing the play by play and the color commentary, um, especially when I'm playing the match, and then. I'm doing like four things at once, like planning the next spot in the match, thus while playing the match and trying to interact with chat while doing both commentating the play by play and the color look like kind of like explaining the story plus talking about the moves and, uh, and, and stuff like that. So it's, it's doing that, like it's having that interaction. And a lot of times I feel bad because I can't, you know, directly interact right away so i might not get somebody's message but i'm always trying to respond but a lot yeah. of people a lot of people think um that the commentary just keeps them engaged they feel like they're watching uh you know a wrestling show at home on their big flat screen or something like that um you know, <laughs> and and that's and that's you know that's what i want i want people to feel like they are actually watching a real wrestling show like wwe or AEW or whatever yeah. they happen to watch even if they're not into wrestling anymore even if they don't religiously watch wrestling if you find some type of entertainment in my thing i feel like i'm doing my job anyway um so, yeah know? yeah and that's and that's and that's it why do you think people should follow you like what this is the part of the question where you yeah. can brag about yourself as much as you want. <laughs> um, you know, boost that ego up a little bit. Like, oh, here we know. go. Get rid of <laughs> But, like, why do you think people should follow you? If you were to, like, like give a, a sales pitch to yourself, to someone, to someone, and say, hey, follow my channel, why do you think that they should? I think if anyone's seen my content, you know, I'm... I'm really welcoming, you know, like I'm I'm jolly and welcoming and I literally let viewer into my home. That's what I feel like. You know, like I'm always I'm never gonna ignore anyone. Like anyone that comes into my chat, I'm there straight away. I'm talking to you, you know, I'm always asking questions, you know, how are you doing? What games do you play, etc. Which you don't really I mean I've seen streamers that literally don't even look towards the camera. Like I s I've seen streamers where they have the camera on the side, you know. Right. Which, which you, how can you engage your chat when you're not even looking towards the camera? You know. Right. Like, or mm -hmm. they'll take that little glance like this and look over, and you know, and be like, "Yeah, you know that that's that to me is like, yeah, I I totally I concur with you. I totally get that vibe uh, from you um, when I first joined, and and we were talking about wrestling, and then you were saying how you know you were a fan." And it's crazy because 
Um, there's this guy, Brian Saber, who I met on Glimish, and yeah. I plan to have him on um, the podcast as well. And he said, um, we talked wrestling for three hours while he wow. was playing while he was playing Titanfall, just wrestling, just solely on wrestling. And we were friends instantly. That's all we talked about for the past three hours. Screw Titanfall. Screw everything. We we just talked about wrestling for three hours, and that was that was that was that was, that was what it was. I like to people to follow me. Like I want them to follow me because of my content, you know, and maybe my interests. Because like, I'm the same. Like I'll follow someone that has the same interest as me. So that like, means if someone wants to follow me because I've got the same interest, you know, that's fantastic. Because we can go on and talk for hours, you know. And right, I think that's what. Listen, you know if. I see streamers that don't have microphones or cameras, you know. I stream. Mm -hmm. I thought streaming is about connecting with your community, you know, talking, do, having little discussions, you know. And when someone comes into my stream, you know, I want them to expect, you know, like it's a family, you know, it's a family of, of, of gamers, you know, where can, we can just talk about anything. And that's why I think people should follow me, you know, it's about the communication. You know, and um, having fun, mm -hmm. talking about games, wrestling, you yeah, know, exactly. Other stuff that's out there, you know. Exactly. Now, the last part of this question is kind of it's it's a controversial thing. It's something that's through um, all the streaming uh, platforms, and that is the dreaded follow for follow <laughs> type idea. Um, I've always said it never works. Um, nope. it, it, it's not a thing that works. So talk about your experience with that. Has that ever happened to you? Is it and and My. is is that something? Um, is that something? Creators obviously it is something that creators should avoid. But how do you approach a you know situation like that? Because I myself, I sometimes don't know how to approach that type of situation um you know it's like follow for follow and and i don't know i don't know how to like i it's like i don't say no but at the same time i don't say yes either i'm just kind of i just kind of like glance over it and i'm just like whatever but how do you deal with a situation like that and what is your advice to creators um that sort of get that wrong idea and why do you why do you think it spreads the wrong message well, first thing, I don't engage. You know, if anyone says follow to follow, I just don't engage. I just say uh, to move on. Because if you're putting follow for follow, what does that actually mean? Simple. It means you're a failed content creator. Right. That's what it means. That, 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 that's, that's what it means. Right. Because like, you're struggling to get followers. You're probably struggling to get viewers. There's a reason behind that. And that is because your content is not good. And you've got to literally do anything to get followers and that is the reason why you see people posting all over the place social media even in your chats follow for follow right don't use it guys please please don't use follow for follow because <laughs> it's simple it means you're a failed content creator yeah and it and it doesn't it doesn't really help you because no to that it's just a number like that person's not going to come back. That yeah. person's not going to interact with you. That's not a real viewer. Like that that it's just another, you know, number that can be added to the totals and that's it. Like nobody's going to um nobody's going to come back. We uh, I did have uh fight mics on the podcast in the previous episode and we talked about one of the main issues was uh that wrestling content creators struggle with was the fact that when you have an efed um, which is a uh, custom wrestling promotion with custom wrestlers, custom stories, same thing that I do. Um, yeah. And the number one issue that you run into is so many people want their characters on yeah. your eFed. And I have a rule, I have a set of rules where you must be a follower of the channel um, for uh, two weeks. You must be a follower of the channel for at least two weeks. And... You know, you have to show up uh, to the streams every once in a while. Otherwise, your cause is going to be deleted because 11 or 100 cause slots is very limiting. Um, you know, and, and, and 1,000 image slots is also very limiting. So mm. you're taking up a slot that could be somebody else's 
call. Yeah. So, you know, that's something that I, you know, definitely mentioned about, and I definitely concur with you on, um, on all of that. Uh, I, I think, I think it does mean that you are a failed or desperate is the term that I would like to use. Yeah, uh, desperate. Yeah. Content creator, because you're not putting that energy into your content. All that energy that you're putting into the follow for follow coming into people's chats or whatever, you could put that into your content and make your content better. And this oh, is I don't not... get that. That's what's really funny about this is they're putting follow for follow. But if you want a really fo a proper follower, they're putting follow for follow. Talk to that streamer, you know. Right. Engage with that streamer. Then you might have a real follower, a real viewer coming by your streams. Right. Exactly. You know it. it, it push comes to shove talk to the streamer like a normal person um yeah. you know engage with the streamer don't make it just about oh i'm 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 a, i'm gonna just have this guy follow me and have uh, and then i hope this guy follows me back like you know and that's kind of what it is and it's moral of the story is don't do follow for follow it's never yeah. going to work for you um, just continue to work on your content. And speaking of that, um, even though I don't have this question on my sheet, this question just kind of came into my head based on the discussion that we just had. And that was, what advice do you have for anyone that wants to get into content creation? With your tenure, um, obviously 10 years content creation, that's quite a long time to be doing this. Um, most people don't even make it past two to three years. Uh, so, you know, most people quit or, you know, they, they find other things to do. Um, what is your advice to them if they wanted to just start going? I'll say don't follow the sheep. Do your own content, you know, do content that you want to do, not what others are doing. Exactly. You know, I think I, I've seen so many streamers, for instance, maybe stream Fortnite because everyone's streaming Fortnite, but they don't like playing Fortnite, they're just doing it to try to actually climb the ladder and that's the wrong way to do it you know enjoy your favorite games stream them and forget about the numbers or making money just have fun on stream exactly you know that's that's what that's what you gotta have fun for um you that's know and, and and that's that's pretty much it uh you know well we thank you all for joining us for an episode of btv I don't know when the next episode is going to be, but um, we have an episode with Young Sin lined up. I have his sheet done. We just got to figure out some stuff. There's plenty of people that I would like to have on. Um, you know, I, I, I definitely have enjoyed this podcast and definitely appreciate all the support. And I'd like to thank MG Live, my guest here, for being on with us today and chatting about his journey. It has been a pleasure having you on. And, um, you know, it's been great. Thank you. It's been an honor. Thank you for inviting me to your podcast. Yeah, and it's been great. And this, and this has been BTV, and we'll see you guys next time. Hey, guys.